With the release of Season 2, one of the starting missions that you have to complete now is building a Belang, as well as building a stone base on top of it. So in today's video, I'd like to go over the Belang Walker itself, as well as its upgrades and tech tree unlocks, followed by building a stone base including some tips and tricks, as well as different tools that you can use within the building process. The Belang is what's known as a Founder Walker, meaning that it's designed specifically to be a mobile base. For this reason, both the walker and the stone base that you can build on top of it have an armor rating of solid, which means that the only way to break into it is using a hellfire bolt. The blank can be unlocked at the bottom of the walker tree, requiring only fragments to unlock the body, the bone upgrades, as well as the small wings. When you build the blank, it has the first level of upgrades for water already unlocked, allowing you to store 120 water on the ship. And with bone upgrades, that goes up to 180 water, which is very comparable to that of a dinghy. However, as with all Founder Walkers, it does not have a cargo and it does not have a gear slot. The walker can hold a maximum of 2,880 kilograms worth of weight. However, the closer you get to that weight limit, the harder it is for this walker to get up hills, as it's not exactly great at doing that right off the bat. Now the last important step before we get into building is the amount of tiles that the walker can hold. With a belang, the maximum count is 70 tiles. Now this only refers to the building tiles that make up the base. Anything you place inside of it, including boxes, maintenance chests, and other, will add to the amount of time it takes to unpack and pack, but it does not affect the maximum pack count. Now before you get into building your base, you'll have to go into the construction tab and tech tree and make sure you've unlocked the base maintenance chest and at the very least stone walls. But I would also suggest trying to unlock the small base walker packer. However, you can demolish a couple walls and put one inside of your base at a later date. You just have to replace the walls afterwards. So now that we're done in the tech tree, let's get into building the basic walker itself. The first tip in this video that I'd like to give you is that you can actually use a desert mule in place of a vision powder if you don't have access to the huge cactus fruit. This will work for building almost every walker. Just in case you didn't know, you can actually disassemble things while they're just a blueprint if you plan to put something else in their place. The design I'm going to show you today will give you a 3x3 space with double walls all over, including a bed inside, a walker packer, 8 chests, all of your different crafting stations, and a maintenance chest. This design will give you multiple exits, including an airlock on each side. This base uses the maximum number of building tiles, but if you didn't want to double wall the entire thing, you could modify it to be able to fit a torque windmill off the side. However, keep in mind, if you want to build a torque windmill off the side, you need to build a platform down and then up to enclose it. Alternatively, because they're so cheap, you could just make a whole nother blang and then put a torque base on that, but then you'll have to move both each time a tile burns. Before we begin building, I've included a list of all of the materials required to create this base and everything that's inside of it. You can also see on the lower right hand side the maintenance costs for 24 hours with this base setup. If you don't build a base maintenance chest as well as fill it with the required supplies, every base will decay, causing it to take damage over time until it eventually collapses. When you first go to build your base, you can actually get on top of the main platform with a pack feature open by carefully climbing up the side as you can see here. When building this base, I would suggest starting with the tile directly in the center of the platform. One of the other little perks of using a desert mule over a vision powder for this specific project is that it allows you to carry more materials when you're beginning your base. If you're looking to build the two wall method, it's important to start building on the corner of your base so that you can immediately get your double wall stack and your maintenance chest placed down. Now to stack walls, you simply have to toggle your snapping button, which by default on the keyboard is R, and then the goal is to get it as tight to the back wall as you possibly can. You may also notice that this will allow you to mesh the walls a little bit on the sides, and this will allow you to be as efficient as possible with the space that you have. Now it's best to try and get the walls as tight to the back wall as possible, but if there's a little bit of a gap, you can just manually place the wall instead of snapping it to the next one. At this stage, you only need to worry about double stacking the back wall. You will cover the side from the outside later. As soon as you get your maintenance chest down, try to make sure that you fill it with an abundance of stone, wood, fiber, and wood shafts. This will prevent you from losing any durability on any of the tiles that you place during your building. Something else to keep in mind is that the base maintenance chest has a pack feature so you can use that to move items around. One quick tip I'd like to include when you're building is that you can actually use the Q and E keys to cycle through the different panels. That way you don't have to manually select them from the menu every time. From here you're going to continue to build your floor, your walls, your doors, as well as double layering your back wall. But do not create the roof tiles quite yet. Thank you. 
Once you have all of your walls in place, you're going to want to start building a roof. However, you're going to want to leave these three roof tiles out until you can place your base walker packer inside. And then you can cover the two center tiles as well as build your second level one by one on top of the corner tile. The purpose of this second level in the corner is so that when you place your bed, you're able to spawn inside of your building. Because if you place a bed on a single floor, it spawns you on top of the building. And that can make for a bad day if you're already under attack. Once you have the base all walled in, you can begin building your airlocks as well as your second layers. You may notice that I have originally built the second level as a 2x1 instead of a 1x1. Unfortunately, I could not keep it this way due to the pack count size. Now the trick when you're trying to place your second layer on the outside of the wall so you can conserve space on the inside is to place a roof tile so that you can stand on it, unsnap, and then place your wall. At this point, you can delete that roof tile but if you're concerned with the aesthetics, you can stand on the roof tile and manually place the wall on the side of the airlock. Otherwise, you'll simply have to rotate a snapped wall outwards until it lines up. From there, you can use that same method to be able to place the second layer on the outside of your last wall. Next, you can either place your second layer of walls around the upper one by one, or you can start by putting your roof tiles down and cycling them up to give you a second layer on the roof. You may have to move your camera around quite a bit when trying to place a tile in the correct spot and direction. Once you're finished layering the outside walls, the roof, as well as the one by one on top, you can move to the inside where I'll show you how to stack boxes using a roof tile. To be able to stack boxes on top of one another, you have to place a roof tile and then angle it down. The amount you have to angle it differs for each different type of building material, but with stone the best way that I've found to do it is you angle it down until it's red, and then move it back up 6 clicks. Once your first roof is placed, you'll be able to snap the next roof over in the same position so you don't have to worry about trying to line it up properly. From here you can begin stacking your boxes. You'll notice that if you try and place the top box first, it will give you a message that the object is not supported. The trick to getting around this is you place your lower box first, and that will provide support for you to place your top box. This method will allow you to maximize the usable space within your base. Next you can set up the inside. A cool little tip to remember when you're trying to place things near the door is that if you open it, it'll actually allow you a little bit more space to place things. In this base, I've used that method to be able to place the hammock as well as two stomping stations right beside either door that otherwise would not have fit. Once you have everything placed just how you want it, the base is done. If you set the base up the same way that I have, you should have around 90 tiles when packing and when in walker form, it should equate to around 775 kilograms worth of weight which is well below the maximum weight capacity of the walker. Until the release of lava maps, it will be almost impossible to break into a stone base. For that reason, you don't have to double layer, but personally, I believe that if you're going to build something, you might as well build it right the first time. Now please keep in mind when you're building this base, it's always best to have a little bit of extra supplies just in case you make some mistakes, just like I did with the top section of this roof. The way this base is set up maximizes the usable space inside and it's really good for solos and small groups because it has plenty of space for storage as well as all of your crafting but it doesn't look like a super worthwhile target especially if they can see that it's at least two walls thick. Now that we've covered a basic base another super cool use for this walker is to create a forward operating base that's particularly useful when you're trying to both attack or defend a proxy. It can also be extremely useful in the later stages of a walker battle to give you a reasonably safe spot to store gear as well as have an extra spot to spawn from once you've run out of spawns on a boat because you can spawn on a bed without previously selecting it. Well that pretty much wraps it up for this video. I hope you've enjoyed the design that I've made for this base and keep in mind they have added stone foundations to the game now so you don't actually have to build your base off of a belang but it is quite nice to be able to move it. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already, feel free to subscribe. On that note, I'd really like to thank everyone that's recently subscribed to my channel. I've got lots of new videos in the works, and if there's anything in particular that you'd like to see, feel free to let me know down in the comments, and I'd be happy to make a video on it. Good luck out there on your adventures, and I'll see you next time.